Cleaning Nation. Welcome to another episode of the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast. As always, I want to start the show by thanking you. You are amazing human beings. Thanks for sharing the show. Thanks for all the great reviews on iTunes. Keep them coming. Thanks for the feedback in the Facebook group. If you're listening to the podcast, make sure you check us out on the YouTube channel. If you're watching us on YouTube, take us on the road by subscribing to the podcast. No matter what, everything you need, all the content that we put out is at growmycleaningcompany.com. If you are serious about growing, you've got to go there. It's totally free. I just put up an amazing opportunity and magic tool to grow your cleaning company, all sorts of good stuff. Today, we are chatting with Ken Ellis from Grace's Cleaning Service. Ken and his wife, you guessed it, Grace, have been serving the St. Louis area, just a little town right outside of St. Louis for about a year and a half. Ken, what on God's green earth caused you to go into business with your wife like a crazy person? <laughs> First of all, Mike, I want to appreciate uh, the invite to the show. I'm really looking forward to the podcast and uh, getting some great nuggets from you. Beautiful, man. Excited um, to have you. Thanks. Uh, the way that uh, I got involved with my wife to answer your, uh, the question here is that uh, my basically wife started to advertise smartly to, uh, to try to get some cleaning uh, houses to clean. And, um, and it basically just grew larger and larger after that. I, I've got some kind of a business background, own another couple of businesses and kind of came in and helped her. Um, originally, um, we kind of bumped heads every two and a half seconds. What? Um, Married people wasn't... bumping heads when they're working together? Don't tell my wife. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I've never heard of that. <laughs> no, not a bit. I mean, and, I, and I'm literally telling you, every time that we would have to speak business, we would bump heads. So then I kind of just stepped back. I, sure. You know what I'm like? I, 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 this is crazy. We're You're a good husband. Five. So I continue to do my other businesses. And then I just recently have come back and she said, you know what? You definitely are far, it seems far more motivated <laughs> to do the business and the build side that I am. And hey, let's do this. Let's make it happen. All right. All right. So now we're, we're next we're going to have to have Grace on a couple months, get her side of the story. She'll be like, I told him to get the heck out and I was going to divorce him if he stuck his nose in, but he won't leave. We'll be like, oh, well, that's now we know the real <laughs> picture of what's going on in this little party. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, it's fun. I rarely get guys or gals that have other businesses. What If you don't mind sharing, I'm just curious what other businesses you got. Sure. I have a, uh, I have an e-commerce business. Um, Grace's e-commerce, I assume. What's that? Grace's e-commerce, I assume. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm just making funny, man. Basically, I, I know I got you. Um, it's, uh, it's basically drop shipping. So I drop ship, uh, different products, uh, basically any product you can name across the United States and other countries as well. Wow. So you guys went from the most, uh, hands off. I don't make it. I don't do nothing. I just ship it and hopefully take some margin to the most hands on. I physically have to have human beings in buildings cleaning to get paid. Like those are the opposite <laughs> ends of the spectrum, man. You got it both covered. Right. Yep. That is absolutely correct. It's, it's definitely a complete different opposite thing. And that was my whole thing. I was looking for a business that I was completely, that was kind of automated. If I could go sit on the beach and, you know, I, as long as I had a laptop and a phone, I could check my orders and drop ship them every day. And it didn't make a difference where I was, that kind of di digital nomad kind of thing. Um, but yeah, this is an entirely different, uh, different model where the opposite is complete hands-on. Cool. Well, how can I help you make it slightly less hands-on, man? How can I help today? So what I'm asking, what I'm looking to know is if we talk of commercial and residential, um, what makes more sense? You know, I actually personally think both of it makes more sense to do both. Well, you're wrong. Okay, good show. We'll talk. No, just kidding. <laughs> Sorry, um, it's Friday. I'm feeling frisky. We're I don't know when this is gonna release, but we're we're recording on a Friday, and I'm feeling silly. Um, full disclosure, Cleaning Nation. I want to be totally transparent with you. Um, Ken and I spent I don't know, 10, 15, 20 minutes. I was really enjoying chatting with him before we hit record. And this poor guy, he was mentioning how uh, uh, since they're moving out of kind of, we want to just have his wife cleaning Grace. Uh, to have employees and really scale that they're changing the name Grace's Cleaning Company. And I said, great, that, that makes a lot of sense. So uh, I gave him a bunch of coaching. He didn't ask for it. Poor guy was kind enough to, to listen and not you know hang up on me like he should have. And um, in that, he was talking about, hey, we want to do commercial residential. And I'm like, no, you don't. And uh, he said, well, let's talk about that. And I said, well, hold on, let me hit record and then we'll talk about it. So we set this whole thing up. The whole thing's a ploy to have this conversation. But I'm excited to share with you, Greg, because I get a lot of... <clears throat> people that have the attitude of like, well, if there's this guy, you know, I'm just starting. I need customers. I need lots of customers. So why would I shut myself off from, you know, half of the customers out there, right? If there's commercial, I'll take the commercial. If there's residential, I'll take the, the residential. Is it, am I putting words in your mouth or is that a fair, am I getting where you're, where you're feeling? You're absolutely dead on. Okay. And I got to tell you, first of all, 
I have been there. So I don't want you to think I came out of the womb going, you got to have a niche, mom. <laughs> like I was uh, young and I don't want to say dumb because I would infer that my, my good friend Ken here is dumb, but I was dumb. Ken's smart. I was, when I was young and dumb, I felt the exact same way. Uh, <clears throat> After my my first business was a service master franchise, which I didn't have that problem because I only owned the franchise to do commercial. I don't know. I think I would have had to pay extra to residential. So anyway, it was it was I didn't have that kind of wonderlust of I've got to go do this thing. Then when I bought my next company, it was a manufacturing company. That's when I did all sorts of things. We made tents for parties. We made camping tents. We made awnings. We made stuff for the military. We made bags. We, if it was made of fabric and we could sew it, we would make it. And I had huh. three or four little tiny. I don't want to say crappy, but kind of little lines of business and none of them really took off. And uh, I share this kind of when I, some, sometimes when I present or speak to, to audiences, uh, I went through a divorce, which good Lord, Ken, if you ever have an opportunity to get a divorce, divorce pass, it was the worst thing that ever happened. Absolutely. Absolutely. The worst. Don't, don't listen to the press. It, it sucked. Always, always keep it a keeper. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> good, you go, good Lord. Are you correct, man? Yeah. I, so um, yeah, broke, destitute, uh, miserable at the a shell of a man. Um, I was forced to kind of walk away from all of that. And I started anew and not because I was a business genius or anything. I was just like, you know what? I don't have the energy to do all this nonsense. I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to focus on it. Uh, I'm going to be real. I'm going to have my core. Anyway, some things changed, but one of the big change was instead of doing seven things, we did one thing. We did commercial shade structures, big shade structures. And we did it well. And that was the fastest growing company. That was like the first company I sold for seven figures and did multiple million dollars. Um, and it was fantastic. And I, it was really core values and focus. So all that to say, I don't want you to think like I'm with the niche police and I'm just like, it's my job to go around telling people what to do. I just seen it. Um, also in coaching for the last three years, I, I think I shared with Ken off air. I have zero seven figure customers, million dollar customers in revenue that do both. Zero, not one, none. All my million or multi-million dollar customers do one or the other, but never, ever both. So that's kind of anecdotal, right? Here are some stories of why it doesn't work, but not really hard data. The hard data is really we're not in the cleaning business. That's where a lot of us make the mistake. We think we clean better than anybody or, you know, we're cleaning is so spectacular. People tell their friends and they can't help but have us. Um, that's small time thinking. Um, if you're going to sell 100 accounts, whether they be commercial or residential, I, so that would be like Bob's Burger in Phoenix, and I'm totally making it up. I'm sure there's a Bob's Burger, but I've never been there if it, if it exists, saying, we have the best hamburger in the world. And guess what? Maybe they do. And they're selling $132,000 a year of hamburgers. Or we could go to McDonald's, who does not say they're the best hamburger in the world. They say they're the most consistent hamburger in the world. I, can, I promise you, Ken, I, I could fly out there right now. I'm in Phoenix. Fly out there tomorrow afternoon. We could grab a Big Mac in St. Louis or whatever town you're in right outside of St. Louis at the McDonald's. And we're going to have the exact same experience as if you flew out here and we went down to the corner and had a, a burger, correct? Absolutely. So it is not about who can create the best burger, because I think everybody would agree that Bob's Burger or Steve's Burger or Grace's Burger is probably better than the McDonald's Burger. The McDonald's Burger isn't even good, but it is consistent, and they know what their customers want. They know that their customers aren't looking for a gourmet burger experience. They're looking for a place that their kids can play in the thing. They're looking for clean bathrooms. They're looking for easy and cheap and Happy Meal toys and, and a certain smell and, what, and, and nostalgia because they grew up there, and they're looking for the Ronald McDonald. So they're experts at exactly what their customers want and they know it in a hamburger same thing with you if you are going to be an expert in what your customer want you have to you have to know your customer so you're like well my customers housewives and it's guys that own businesses oh and property managers of course is oh and, and, and managers for restaurants that we that too and oh doctors that have yeah those and lawyers that, that's our mind you can't know any of them it's impossible you're like hey it's just me and grace we have no staff we don't know what the heck we're doing we're going to learn 27 different niches at one time and become experts at all of them because we've all this time and money to no you have no time and no money Pick one, become amazing at it. I, my last business was a car dealership. Before that was a construction company. I coach owners of cleaning companies. Why don't I just say, well, am I qualified to coach car dealer owners and um, uh, manufacturing companies and construction companies? Absolutely. But I don't. And are there more of those than, than cleaners? Yeah, of course there are. Um, and they have more money, quite frankly. <laughs> you guys are all broke. Huh. Um, but I love owners of commercial cleaning companies. I've been doing this for two or three years. I've got the podcast. And it's so easy to become a little tiny mini celebrity, right? Nobody knows me as I walk the street. I'm not getting asked for my autograph. But I promise you, if I go to an industry event, people are like, oh, my gosh, it's you. Will you sign my book? What's going on? The only way I have the opportunity is because I picked a niche. You were never going to be a celebrity in your niche. You're never going to be a big deal in your niche. You're never going to be known as the guy who knows everything about this thing unless you pick this 
thing. So I don't know if I'm answering your question or not. Yeah, I, I guess it's more, I guess I would say this or ask this. I mean, if you had yeah, the push back, please. If you had the opportunity to do, I mean, I, yes, I understand what you're making very clear is it's most important other than anything to pick, a, definitely to pick an edge. I guess, but what I would say is that if you were, if this was something that you were building, okay, mm -hmm. would you go in the residential direction or would you go in the commercial direction and why? Oh, good question. Let me get that, brings up one more point I wanted to make about the picking a niche. So, because of what I thought you were going to say was, and I'm already answering the question I thought you were going to say in my head, and you're like, I didn't ask that, but I'm going to answer it anyway, and then I'll answer your actual question. What I thought you were going to say, well, what, what if I get an opportunity? What if I pick residential and some commercial just falls into my lap? W wouldn't I take the money? Is that a question you would ask, or am I totally swinging a miss? Sure, I would ask that. Sure, I would want to know that, but I guess more so do you, just, just as far as, I mean, obviously, since there's already residential established. Sure. Yeah, no, no I'll answer both. I'm not going to dodge the second and question. And we do have one commercial. We do have one commercial client, but that said everything else is residential. Okay. Yeah, no, I wouldn't take it. That would be like me, people coming up and going, that, here's what happens. When I was young and unsuccessful and I had no education in what I was doing, I didn't have a lot of opportunities coming my way. So I, had, I felt like I had to take what I could get. And I said yes to a lot of things that wasted a lot of time. And that's the problem. I'm doing all this from experience, right? This isn't a book I read that said, tell everybody about niches. This is for me wasting years and hundreds of thousands of dollars starting a blind company and shutter company, just all this other crap that just was a waste of time. And I'm just desperate to save you guys that time. So no, the answer to the question you did not ask, uh, no, I would not take another one. Just like right now, if you're like, hey, Mike, fly out here and and I'll give you a hundred thousand bucks to fly out here and, and sit with me for six months or three months or a month and run my company. I would say pass, pass, and pass. That is not what I do. Or coach my kid at soccer. That's not what I do. I don't have to think about it. I'm not worried about it. Uh, or hey, would you coach me at this other thing? No, I don't do that. This is what I do. I'm better than anyone else in the world at it. Uh, and I've got more customers than I need, so I don't need this other nonsense. So the, the the better you get at what you're doing, the more opportunity will come to you, and the the more you'll have to, you'll it'll be more important for you to learn when to say no, not yes. So when you're just starting, you say yes to a lot more than you should. But as you mature and get more businesses, much more opportunity will come to you and you'll start realizing the powers of saying no, not in saying yes. So I just want to accelerate that process for you and the listeners so you can start saying no earlier. All right. That said, what's the better one? Uh, so the good news here or bad news, depending on how you look at it, is there's no right answer. If the right answer was commercial, guess what? My company would be called growmycommercialcleaningcompany.com. Uh, or if it's residential, it'd be growmymaidservice.com. If there's just one right answer, I wouldn't trick the other half of you and be like, ha suckers, you, you're picking the wrong one. Uh, I would just tell you, this is the right answer. So the right answer is not which is better or which I would pick, and I'll answer it, but that really makes no difference. It's what's better for Ken and Grace and your goals. Okay, so they're just different. It's like, which is better, a boy or a girl? Well, I don't know. What do you want? Like, do you like playing basketball and being rough and having dirty, smelly kids around? Then pick boys. If you like pretty, sweet, and kind, and, and you can't roughhouse with them as much, then girls are better, but they're not inherently better. They're just different. So uh, tell me a little bit about your goals for your company or for your life, and then we'll, re we'll reverse engineer a company that kind of solves those goals. Okay, so I didn't mention this before, but me and Grace, we uh, we we're a family of nine. So we have seven seven children. Yes, and they're not. And a lot of people say, "Oh, wow, how many did she bring, and how many did you bring?" No, it's not the deal. They're, our seven children are our seven children. You know, me and Grace made all seven of them together. You're like so, she brought seven, and I brought seven. We 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 brought. Right. Well, I brought half of seven, and she brought the other half. We just combined. <laughs> right. So we have seven children, the, the youngest being two years old, the oldest being 16 years old. we got a couple of twins in there, so it's, it's, it's always good times. So wow. that being said, seven children, obviously we're looking to build a legacy here with this company, um, something that we can you know, leave to our children, et cetera. Um, we're obviously, I'm extremely money motivated. Um, I'm looking to build a huge, huge company corporation here. Um, you know, my, my secret sauce is my wife because she's the one that loves to go out there and do the, you know, do the do. I'm the one that wants to be the business development guy and build the business. Well, I got to tell you, enough, I'm as a man with only two kids, uh, when you're like, I'm very, very money motivated. I'm like, you know, it'll make you m money motivated. Nine mouths to feed will get you money motivated real quick. Right, right. <laughs> when you're like, you went to Costco and spent $800 today? What? Right. <laughs> and she's like, well, which of the kids would you <laughs> like not to eat? <laughs> Don't even talk to me about the food store. Literally, I'll just <laughs> drop this one. Number. I'll shut up. So when we go to the food store, mm. we probably – so when I go to a food store, we spend about 1200 bucks. Oh. And the problem with this the problem with this is, Mike, is we do this multiple times a month. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> 
So I hope they're sending you a Christmas present when you come. They're like, oh, 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 Mr. and Mrs. Ellis, here's your cart. We have it all signed. They get your name on the front. <laughs> they should be taking great care of you people. Good Lord. Costco was built for you. Um, crap, now I forgot. Okay, so you want to build a legacy. A, you want to make money. B, you want to build a legacy for your family, correct? Correct. Okay. So first of all, I, I always like momentum. So it sounds like you've got some good clients and you understand the cleaning business already, correct? Correct. Okay. So that doesn't mean, well, then you just do cleaning. That means there's a point in the clean, right? This is, there's, this is like I said, this is going to be a black or white. I'm going to walk you through a conversation and ultimately as the owners, you and Grace are going to decide. I'm just, my job is to give you data and help you make an educated decision, not tell you what to do, certainly. Um, so I, you've been doing this for a year and a half. You've already got some traction. You've got customers that know, like, and trust you. You'd mentioned off air. You've got some really good reviews. Um, realize if you switch to commercial, you have to give all that up. That doesn't mean you can't switch. It just means it's to be considered. So okay. if I am looking for faster growth, I don't like nights and weekends, and I don't mind hitting a wall sooner, I will probably go with residential. Um, quite frankly, it is very hard to build a $5 million residential cleaning company. Uh, I don't, I've never had a client that is of that. I think I've got, got, and have had like one, maybe $2 million cleaning companies and they're right or residential cleaning companies are right at a million. Um, so I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying, if you want to grow beyond a million, then if that's a big deal to you. I want to build a five or $10 million thing that I can employ seven kids in or five kids or three or however many interested. Um, but I need a big company. Commercial is about your only option. Um, I'm not saying it can't happen with residential, but you'd have to, you'd, you'd almost have to franchise, right? You'd have to have more than one location. It's just, it's a bear to have one location doing a million bucks of residential, uh, even, especially in St. Louis, right? You're not in LA or New York or, or something like that. Even then, you can build a $1 million one. I don't know of any two or three or $5 million ones. Um, so is that a big concern, how big you want to grow? Or is like, if you're like, hey, if we're doing a million and making, you know, 150,000 bucks, 200,000 bucks, we'd be okay with that? Or is that not enough? You know, $150,000 or whatever, that's definitely not going to be enough. That, I mean, I can, you know, that's pretty much have our food bill off. So it, it, I, I, would, I would be looking at, if, I, if I'm looking at numbers, I'm looking at a, a $10 million something. Okay, then I would either plan on franchising, which is a 10 year prospect. I don't know of any franchises that three, you know, started three and a half years from now or ago and they're, they're doing 10 million. So it's either a franchise model or a commercial cleaning model. Um, so again, I'm not saying commercial cleaning is better, but for you, if you're like, no, a million dollars ain't going to cut it, or, and I'm just figuring 15, 20% profit, which is reasonable, that's 150, 200,000 bucks off a million dollars in revenue. If you're like, ain't going to get it done, eh, you, you, you're probably commercial, my friend. Mm -hmm. So definitely uh, probably the commercial route, which basically, I guess we have two choices. We could keep Grace's cleaning company and then start a new company, yes. which is all that's probably what I would do. Because, yeah, we're not going to go to all of Grace's people and be like, hey, bugger off. You know, thanks for nothing. Get out. Uh, certainly, we're going right. to try. So, and again, I'd like to as quickly as possible get out of that business. So, I'm not saying you fire everybody, but, um, you know, they're going to hold, they're going to slow the growth of your, of your, uh, of, of what you're doing. Um, and the other thing, I just, so you don't kind of wander into this unknowing, residential cleaning is Monday through Friday, eight to five generally. Um, commercial cleaning is five to eight, right? Yeah, you can't work when they're there. You have to work at night. So if you're running both of the, and some, depending on what kind of clients you take, oftentimes they're seven days a week, right? If you're doing a restaurant or a golf course or uh, a gym, or there's a lot of types of buildings that you don't have to take. I'm just saying, if you take, there are seven day a week clients, which is good, right? You get seven days a week. Those, those are your big clients. But um, now you're working just about 24 seven because Monday through Friday, you've got, you've got crews out eight to five. And then as soon as those go home, you've got crews out at five and it's, it, it can be a lot. So, um, I would, if you're going to do commercial, I'd go all in commercial. Uh, again, we don't have to fire Grace's stuff, but I'd try to get you out of that as quickly as possible. Um, and so you can really focus on your, your commercial cleaning business. So literally, I don't know right. that I'd take any more residential clients. I wouldn't fire any, but I wouldn't accept any new ones if you're going to commit to residential. Okay. Uh, I want to make sure we have time for the lightning round. Is that, did that kind of get you in, get the, the answer to the questions you were looking for? Because I want to make sure you get an yes, opportunity sir. to speak too. Cool. All right. Let's hit the lightning round. I'll shut up for two seconds. We'll get you to give some of your uh, feedback back to Clean Nation. Question number one, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? 
do the opposite that from what everyone else is doing. Man, I have made a lot of money doing that. <laughs> I like that. It's a lot more fun and oftentimes more profitable. Uh, you have to use it sensibly, right? Just because everyone's driving on one side of the road doesn't mean you go on the other and be ridiculous. But in business being different will get you right. get you there. Uh, all right. What's the biggest mistake you've made in the cleaning business that we can all learn from? Hmm. Not just doing, you know, um, stop being scared and just jump. Okay. So the, um, the big, I'm taking the biggest mistake is you were scared and you didn't jump. Right. And then basically just doing the, the normal thing and, and expecting to grow without implementing additional things to make us grow. So always be trying to do things to improve the company, to make the company grow quicker each and every day. Never just do the same thing each and every day because what will happen is you'll be the same place you were six months ago, a year ago, et cetera. Love it. I, man, that is, you're wise beyond your years, my friend. Last question. What's one idea, something quick and easy, doesn't have to be huge, but just something simple, Cleaning Nation can implement right away, something easily, quickly implementable to improve their business and or their lives? Join, um, join, a, join a networking group like BNI. Mm, okay. Yeah, those uh, those can be. I've I've heard lots of good things. I've got uh, many clients in networking groups like BNI that have great great uh, great experience. All right, Ken, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, if you've got seven kids and two businesses, I know your time is valuable. Thank you for taking a couple minutes sharing it with us. I appreciate you. I know Cleaning Nation appreciates you. Cleaning Nation. Uh, if you want to check out Ken's show notes page and everything you need to grow your cleaning company, it's all at GrowMyCleaningCompany.com. I will see you there. Congratulations, you are now 16% smarter. Still can't get enough cleaning goodness? Go to www.growmycleaningcompany.com for more of the good stuff. Ever want to be rich and famous? Owners of cleaning companies as well as industry experts can apply to be featured on the show by emailing our producer Natalie at support at growmycleaningcompany.com. Until then, don't miss out on all the latest cleaning industry loving at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now.